So where is Mia left? Well, 6.6. Yeah. So we get into 6.6 with, in a way, the world Mia dwelt in now fit the world she had been living in for the last decade. All of the anxiety, all of the worry, feeling as though every set of eyes carried some latent hostility. All of that remained the same now. Unchanged, except for the fact that it now made objective sense. And I'm like, yeah, like, we have to see the aftermath of this story. Like, prison is the hell that Mia, like, made of the world. All of her fears and anxieties and paranoia are now 100% valid. Mm. Like, she needs, to, like, she should be paranoid about every single interaction here. Um, she should be fearful of every single interaction here. She should be anxious about every interaction here. Because that's kind of what prison is like, especially for someone in her p- p- position where she's loath to buy everybody in there. Because they yeah. know. And th- now she's living her truth. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, uh, it's kind of perfect of, like, everything that Mia worried about the world is now what her world is so uh then we get our second um our second line here which is and then adele who was young 18 or 19 had mouthed off to a guard to try to look tougher than she was and gotten stuck in this cell which might have been intended as a punishment and i'm like mia is a punishment like mia for you you being there is a punishment as well like being in the ma- in the fucking room with the pair of stinky women um this pair of stinky women and, and the like, serial kidnapper yeah, exactly. Like, Mia, you being there is an extra layer of punishment for everybody else that comes into there. Like, yeah, it's this two stinky women and the fucking terrifying serial kidnapper. Um, yeah, like, getting lumped in with the scary muscle woman who's killed many people. Like, um, yeah. And then as she's walking to the library, she's like, were they about to grab her, push her toward the railing? That would be how she'd do it. Ah, it sure would be how Mia would do it. I love foreshadowing. <laughs> It's my favorite literary technique. Yeah. For- foreshadowing is a literary device. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you took kids from their mother. You don't deserve to live. Nobody here thinks you deserve to live. Um, and this is just like, yeah, like the most core, like emotional response to what Mia has done. And it's like, like, it's valid. Like, obviously, like, therefore you should die is not valid. Um, but like, just pure like horror at the things that she's done Mm. is kind of yeah is what most people feel and that she just doesn't get that most people feel yeah um yeah and then we get like this 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 fight where uh, adele is trying to kill her um and so uh yeah mia like knocks her over and is pulling pulling her down a step the back of the girl's head cracked against the metal of the next day down I'm like, oh, the violence is so raw. There's no subtlety. It's just trying to, like, put this fucking girl down as quickly as possible. Mm. And also, as something I just noted um, as I was reading through it, I like that she has changed from Adele to the girl. Yeah. Um, Because that sure mirrors how she talks about Geo later on in the chapter, yeah. which is, yeah, not at all worrying. Um, um, and in turn, um, it is a, a head injury. Mia's specialty. Yes. <laughs> Mia's specialty. Um, yeah. And then we get, yeah, so like, the obviously the CEOs break the fight up and it's infirmary first, question mark? Solitary first. Like, not even like a response from the guard, but just like, yeah, we immediately know she's gone into solitary. And it's like, yeah, like the way that prisons work is just like control. There's no humanitarianism. It doesn't matter that Mia was almost murdered. Control was lost for a moment, so it's reestablished. This is, like, the exact kind of shit that Mia would do. Um, Hmm. Yeah. True surveillance state. Absolute control, exactly as she would have done it. Yeah. 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 Um, And and then also, like, I didn't note this down here, but, like, the way that, like, they put them all into solitary, except there's not enough room in solitary for all of them, so some of them go in together, and it's like, well, that's kind of against the point of solitary, but... (laughs) Um, just very much speaks to like the overcrowding of these prisons can't even do Uh solitary anymore (laughs) can't even do solitary can't even effectively torture people with solitary um speaking of torture uh when the tray came through for the morning it was empty her shouts were answered with a laugh it would be a few days like again straight up torture like that's what solitary is in general but also like the not giving food like it's not like they just didn't give her food because if they just didn't give her food they wouldn't show up yeah for the morning like they came by with an empty tray and put it in there. Like, mm. they are specifically reminding her that it is time for her to eat 
and that she is not allowed to eat, there is nothing for her. Mm. Um, like degrading her sense of time and like sense of self with solitary, like, but yeah, make it clear that like they could care for her and they are not, that she is not worth food. Um, yeah. And then we get another great, great, great quote from Mia, which is, well, not quote from her, but from her mind, which is she'd never had to st- confront the state of things more than when she was an inmate under the state. And it's like, Mia, this is like, yeah, of course, you haven't. This is you and Ben to a fucking T. Like, um, this th- has always been one of your failings. Like, you accept that the state of things is bad, but you never confront it. Mm. You never work on making things better in a societal way. It's like you and Ben are two peas mm. in a pod in that sense. Like, do what's best for, yourse- for yourselves uh, when you could be doing so much good, when you could be helping so much, and you're just choosing not to. Yeah. And now she's actually confronting that, like, oh, no, things are really, really bad, and it's, like, very directly n- negatively, like, impacting me, and I could have done something to help. Ugh. Um. The big thing that has stood out to me in Geo's... Um, interrogation of of Mia um, or rather like referendum I think is the word that Mia uses um, is that Mia doesn't really know how to react to the knowledge that she has helped things get this bad or that like she, yeah. her, her actions have had any consequences on the world as a whole especially in regards to civil yeah. warriors um, and yeah her and Ben two peas in a pod yeah the, the, like they like from from either side their focus was in the wrong place yeah um cavalcantes sucked and they were awful uh but uh they were one power and now another power has filled the power vacuum and just gotten bigger and it was also bad (laughs) yeah yeah exactly (laughs) and speaking of things that are also bad and terrible um the mentality from the government in power was that there was justice in this, in any suffering. Um, and this is just like, this is perfectly the opposite of justice. There's, it's not rehabilitation. They're just trying to maximize misery and suffering. If you've done bad things, you should feel bad. Mm. Like, uh, what an excellent contrast to Pale. Um, so obviously, for those who have read Pale, which I'm assuming is most, um, there is a lot to talk hey, about. Hey, Cyrano hasn't seen uh, it yet. That. I'll advocate for those well, who hasn't, haven't read uh, the other uh, serials. Um, hey, Cyrano, go read Pale. It's really good. Uh, they're thinking about it. Um, <laughs> they'll get there. Um, yeah, but like, yeah, Pale talked a lot about justice and incarceration and things like that. Um, and I think this is like such a great contrast of like, this is the perfectly immoral justice, like quote unquote justice. Like this is perfectly immoral, like incarceration. Mm -hmm. It's just suffering. Um, Yeah. So then we get into Geo. So what name are you going by? She asked Geo. Geo looked healthy. I'm like, I love the way that Nia, that Mia works with names. Like, Gia, Gio doesn't get a name at all until she gives her name. Then it's immediate. And also she doesn't get the girl. Um, (laughs) Until later on, when she's she's no longer uh, acting the good daughter. Yeah. Um, yeah. So much to say so, in yeah. Geo, the only person that has resolved the pain of the life that she had fled from. Yeah. Being the only person that is able to return to that name. Ah, so good. So good. Um. um yeah. Wow. Um, G- okay, Cyrano de Bergerac, my dear friend, <laughs> once said that v- Valentina and Gio are the center of the stories, like they're, they're the story's heart. Um, they did say that, yeah. Uh, that that Valentina has the opportunity to see things as they are, and uh, and and Geo alone could deliver a a a sound judgment on these characters, and that's yeah. what she's here to do. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's perfect. It's such an excellent confrontation. Mm-hmm. I'm so I'm so happy we got this. Um, I think uh, I I don't have the quote in front of me, but she says it outright. Um, that I think I think yeah, I'm in the best position for it. it. Yeah. 
yeah, she talks about being like somewhat of an outside observer. Yeah. I was like, oh, so good. Um, I'm glad this is yeah, not so the scene of her. So sad that Valentina yeah. died so that Gia could live. Ah, oh, rest in pieces, Valentina. <laughs> um, so yeah, so again, it's it's a mix. I know my brother didn't survive the night you were at the house rescuing Rip. It's hard to get past that. And it's like, yeah, that is hard. But like, Mia genuinely did try at the start, but she didn't try as hard as she could have. Like, she pulled the trigger on the gas knowing he might die, and he did die. And, like, she didn't make a move after she pulled the trigger on the gas to, like, check in on him mm. at all. She just um, shook her head. Like, specifically, they moved away from the room, like, that he was in. Like, Natalie noted it, wasn't yeah. wasn't considered at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, so, uh, Gio's talking about, like, you know, Mia caring about uh, people, especially, like her children. Um, I think you do, but I also think you're possessive, Gio said. I was like, oh, God, yeah, like, this is an amazing confrontation. Mia is crazy pos- possessive, as, like, as we saw with Gio when, like, she was first rescued, and Mia de- decided instantly, like, oh, this is now my daughter. And then Gio talked about her, like, bio mom, like her birth mom, and Mia was like, oh, I kind of regret this a little bit. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, like, any any hint that something is not fully hers, and she's like, uh, yeah, no, that's not Do right. Do I have um, to? <laughs> yeah, she's she's so possessive. It's really, I mean, that's yeah, it's part of what makes her fun. Um, and then like, you know, um, Geo is saying like, oh, you know, you're really good to like. Well, I don't want to say your possessions. That's not right. Um, and I agree here. Like, we've talked a lot about like Natalie's view of. I've written Ripley here, but really I mean Camellia uh, as a possession. And like that doesn't really track with how Mia views her children um, because she doesn't, she does try and give and like let them fully have agency. She does not let herself get caught in that trap of like th- this child is a, is an extension of me as a person. Um, yeah. But like, so yeah, so possessive, like po- talking about her children as possessions isn't right, but like she's absolutely right that Mia is incredibly possessive about her children and like she's good to them, but it's not, yeah, like the possessiveness is very unhealthy. Yeah. Um, which I mean, speaking of, um, you jumped straight to assuming the role of parent. It was weird. Mia shook her head a little. I didn't mean to convey that, to weed you out. I think I wanted to jump straight into the new identity, so there was less chance Rip and Tia overheard anything unusual. I'm like, Mia, sweetheart, you don't understand your own emotions. You you did that, and it wasn't because you min- wanted to minimize misunderstandings. You, like, mm-hmm. Valentina was your daughter. Like, straight away. Yeah. Like, you were desperate to be her mother. We, we, were, like, we were in this... your head when that happened. Or, well, yeah, yeah. rather, we were in uh, Valentina's head, and we got to see that. Um, and Yeah, well, we, we, we were in both of the heads around. Oh, right, because of course yeah, we did have that initial that. encounter um, f- f- yeah. with her in the woods. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, this, like, Mia is straight up wrong about her own state of mind there, because... But it would be more defensible yeah, if like, she had, if that were true, but which is part of the, yeah. If if what she is saying is true, mm-hmm. it, yeah, it would be defensible. But it's it's not like she th- thinks it's true. I'm sure, but like, huh? No, like, yeah. Again, I'll jump back to the point where she, where uh, Valentina mentioned like her birth mother, and Mia has a, that instant of of, reg- of regret for saving her. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not oh, I wanted to just keep you safe. That's, oh, my child is trying to pull away from me. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like, sorry, I fucking love this moment. It's so, yeah. Um, it's it's very in your face of like, Geo saying, you're scary. scary. Scary enough, it's hard to tell you things. Mia frowned. Her hands were still stiff from the outside work and she, hands clasped together, cracked her knuckles. Like, Cracking your knuckles is the stereotype of being a scary person. Mm. Like, <laughs> I do it. Like, I do it all the time because because uh, you too uh, are an incredibly probably, powerful scary person. Because I'm, <laughs> yeah, because I'm so scary. Um, no, just because sometimes my knuckles get stiff and stuff like that, and it can help. Um, that's probably not a good thing to be doing all the time, but whatever. Like, it is the stereotype of like, whoa, like whoa, scary guy over here. Um, yeah, like. 
Mia, <laughs> sweetheart, if someone's saying you're scary and you don't want to be scary, don't like frown at them and like crack all of your knuckles. Yeah. She didn't really think that through. No, she she does not consider it. Um, and I I haven't. There have been a fair few times during this conversation that Mia just does not think about like what she is doing with her body, um, or she just does things with her body. And, like, the text doesn't mention them until afterwards, or she just doesn't, yeah, think about it. Mm. Um, like, her so constantly get, with, with her the fist whole... trying to unclench it. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, I pulled the full quote around that because it's so good. Um, Where with the horse piss ranchers? He's a little cowboy now. He loves it all. Ah, uh, I love it. It's so like fucking ideal for him. Like, he's got so much energy, and, like, put that energy into piss horse ranching, little buddy. Um... Good for Tia. Good for Tia. Yeah. Happy ending for the good man. It sounds kind of ideal. The little baby. Yeah. The little baby. Um, Ripley's with Sean. She and Natalie had a fight. Ripley saying she won't see Natalie until Natalie chills out. And, like, this is so excellent for Rip because, like, God, Natalie, you needed to chill out. But, like, again, like, it is kind of shitty. Like, Sean is a super fucking distant parent who barely stepped up to try and find Rip or to parent. I've written Tia here. Whoops. Sterling. Um, where Ben was more of a dad to Sterling than Sean was. Mm. Like, yeah, I don't know. It, it we, we can hope that Sean is doing good now, but yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's probably better than Natalie, um, who is just like a, a, a miserable little pile of bitterness. But and still is. He, yeah. And um, I, I hope... Um... I hope time away will be what she needs to heal. But the fact that it, even after that crying yeah, hug with hopefully. Ben, she's still doing poorly enough for Ripley and her to fight. It's... It's, yeah, it's worrying. It bodes. Um, I'm not sure what it bodes, it but bodes it bodes. Ill. I think it bodes ill. <laughs> um, and then we get, uh, we get a, a lovely uh, note from poor anxious Geo. I thought there'd be booths, each of us with a phone, place a glass bet- between us. Budget cuts. And they don't really care about my well-being. Or yours. And I'm like, Mia, you're, you're so terrifying. <laughs> like, of course Gio is terrified. Um, like, as Ben noted last chapter, like, we've seen her tear a fucking grown man apart. Like, like also then just, like, rem- casually reminding Gio that the powers that be do not give a fuck about her safety as Gio is, like, trying to articulate this stuff that could make Mia want to murder her is, like, um, yeah, it's scary. Of course she wishes there was, like, fucking plexiglass and, like, yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then we get the question of, can I or should I bond with Tia or should I assume you'll show up and try to take him away? And I'm like, I like that, like, much like Mia with Tia, Gio, Gio's doing a pretty ethical version of this, like, providing a home for someone that has none and loving them like their own child. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. I generally like what she's doing here. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> um, it's the way to I, I will topic, add some caveats sure. in, in um, Yeah. Um, something to be said yeah, uh, of Tia in general uh, is that um line to draw between Tyr and Sterling, uh, with Mia having abandoned Tyr um and uh, effectively um to to the whims of fate. And it's glad it's a good thing that um Gio was there to step up and in for him. But oh, so good. Um that central like parallel of Natalie's work to find Ripley left Sterling in the dust and then um, as Ryder put it, you should have thought that before you did this. Yeah. Mia has now done yeah. the same. Um, very, you're not, yeah, we're but, not but so different, a, you and I. <laughs> yeah, but for a, a much worse reason. <laughs> yeah. And kind of like in a much worse way because like, yeah. Yeah. Because as usual, Mia d- can't just do things like Natalie. She's got a one-upper. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so then we, we get some more from Gio, and it's amazing. I like being a helper, providing things people need. I think that's important, putting something good out there. It's something my dad didn't do. He was the opposite. And I'm like, unstated, it's something Mia didn't do either. Mm. Um, well, it's something that Mia thought she I wouldn't was necessarily doing say with she's, her kids, but, yeah. like... It's her, it's I wouldn't her say me as the opposite. Good, as as Wild Bill would yeah. put it. 
she's not helping society. She's not helping groups of people. She's just helping herself and her children. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love Geo's mindset. It's super wholesome. It's really sweet. Um, yeah. So yeah, we get, it's hell out there and it's getting worse. We need healthy. We need to do the opposite of what we're doing. Like, fucking hell yes, Geo. Be the change you need to see in the world. Yeah. Like, this, personally, like, this is what I do with my work and my interpersonal life. Just, like, try and be good. Do as much good as you can do. It's it's kind of the best people. maxim. Just try and put good for the world. Yeah, exactly. I love it. It's so, yeah, it's so opposite of Mia. It's so opposite of Davy. It's so perfect. Mm, and I'm glad she's found that. I'm so happy for her. She's a good kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, Tyr is happy where he is too. Is there a boy interested in you? <laughs> like, I love, I love that she just doesn't engage at all with this. It's so fun. Like, there's no internal acknowledgement this time that she's like ignoring the question about Tia. She's just completely blanking it. Yeah. And I was like, the, the way poor Gio must be fucking struggling to get this out and like to gauge the response. And Mia is just giving her nothing, like verbally. Almost certainly, Mia is like, brooding a storm and like her fists are clenching and like you know like she's looking scary but like she's just not answering anything and it's like poor geo she's desperately trying to fucking suss out what the vibe is here mm. um and yeah and then she and talks about, about getting out yeah yeah carson was right he was kind of interested woo which is not too surprising <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I mean, I enjoyed this part. Geo doing slightly better. Geo having some good things in her life. Very happy about that. It's um, sweet. It's very sweet. So then, yeah, you get, we get, you can drop off Tia for Carson and I. We'll take him and go. And it's like, as Geo said, she's possessive. And it's like, but at the same time, of course she's possessive. Like, that's her son. But I love that she's just, like, not engaging in the conversation. Like, she doesn't feel like there's a conversation to be had. She's just like, oh, no, those are my children, so they're coming with me. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, I need some... So, uh, getting right back to where we were, and definitely not after two days... Um, not at all, yeah. no. There, there have nope. been absolutely no roadblocks, injuries, uh, unforeseen circumstances, uh, delays, uh, or uh, uh, anything of that sort. I was so, not attacked yeah. by the uh, tuba player uh, in, the, uh, in the downstairs uh, music booths. Uh, and I have no, no. Uh, I've sustained no injuries from an incredible brass martial artist. Yeah. Um, so we have the exact same energy that we did in the last couple of paragraphs we did, um, and everything's yeah, yeah. the exact I mean, same. We, we, so, uh, the, we, we both know for a fact that we were talking about the conversation with Geo, um, yeah. and how well that was going or how poorly it was going. Yeah. So continuing on with that, we have our next quote from <laughs> Mia, which is, I started to feel that again, my world slowly falling apart. Carson wasn't healing. I didn't have work. Ripley was bar barely around. You weren't. I'm like, yeah, like, and this is something that I kind of touched upon in the last chapter is like, she's losing, she was losing control so badly there. Um, and she needed to do something intense mm. and, you know, out of whack and a little crazy to like give herself control. Like she needed in her mind, she needed the control, even though things were kind of going okay. It felt mm. like everything was falling apart because she wasn't controlling enough. And so the and answer was steal some kids. All all Natalie and Ben had to do was turn up the pressure on the on the cooker and, and exactly. that just sent her over the edge. Yeah. Um Yeah. And it's very possible she would have done that anyway because it's Mia. Mm. <laughs> but um yeah, no, they did. Now who needs therapy? <laughs> oh, Mia's always needed therapy. Well, Mia would yeah. I don't, I don't know I how she, much Mia would get from therapy. <laughs> I don't is, know if she, she would engage with it well. It? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm not. Yeah. Um, theoretically, if she could engage with therapy, that would, that sounds like something that would be really good for her. Mm. I don't think she would engage with, <laughs> with therapy at all. Um, the, the general sentiment of it would be nicer if this person was in a better place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so then we get onto this fucking excellent conversation uh, 
where Geo is making some great points. Like, it's still sketchy. Some of the same mentality, some of the same ideas that you should be able to take someone's children because you're better. That sense of superiority. Which is wrong when it's applied as a blanket to a group, but when I'm actually better equipped, Mia asked. And I'm like, as this is so good, like Mia is like hundred percent moving the goalposts. Like she hmm. goes it goes from better, like the question is better, and like sense of superiority to just better equipped. Like, hmm. oh no, it's fine, because I have more money and like more time to be able to spend with the children. Therefore it's there therefore I should have them. Um yeah, she, I I was better equipped than Natalie. Therefore, I sh- I always deserved rip. She never deserved rip. Um, yeah, like we all kind of recognize this violence um, in like a rich person, you know, stealing a baby from a poor person, or like most more commonly, uh, most commonly, really, children from poorer countries that are you know quote unquote adopted by Westerners. Um, yeah, depending on the there's there's levels of ethicality there um and all of the time they're not good um and there's like and there's no difference here like mia mm-hmm. brings up race um and like in geo specific example that she is using like it's it is may well race like may well be race like i don't know my canadian history like for example in australia and we talked about this last time it was mm-hmm. like it's completely racial it's it was a hundred percent a racial bias but in many of these instances it's not just race it's classism plus racism and mm. like, like even kind of bringing up the racism example to Mia is f- kind of good for her argument because she can sidestep it and be like, well, no, because I don't think I'm better than everyone else. Um, but it's like, it's the classism and the way that she feels like she was superior to Natalie because Natalie did not have good support structures. Not that fucking Mia had good support structures. Mia's just, yeah, weird. <laughs> very, very yeah. strange. Um, she's built different. Therefore, she the, felt like, yeah. The, the, the center here is this sort of, like, something that happens throughout this conversation is this sort of compromising. And, um, like, here it's moving the goalposts. But yeah. um, it's this inconsistency uh, where in order for uh, Mia to, like, hold on to her sense of superiority, she has to sacrifice things like, like coherent Uh facts or a good argument or and so on um and um there there is this um note of like wondering whether she subconsciously wanted to get caught um and the the, like that is like for having like you know been in her head in 6.5 the, the, the no point in that uh, in that situation does she uh, that thought even come close to her mind, uh, yeah. she, uh, and she was not trying to operate that so that that could happen. Um, but now it's now in order to maintain sense of self, it's like oh maybe maybe this was a good idea, and I just hadn't realized that yet. Um, yeah. So um, the 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 thing that I really want to get with uh, for like across with this particular section the. Um, which is wrong when it's applied as a blanket to a group, but when I'm actually better equipped, um, you know that your argument is bad when someone who is part of the people that you're saying you're not like would make it the same way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. Like, the like you can you can easily imagine a civil war. You're going like. Oh, I'm I'm not being I'm not generalizing. I I I I I've made a I've made a particular analysis of this family that is nearby and within my area and and I I just see that I'm I'm superior in every way. It's yeah. I'm I'm using the facts. Um like it's 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 the sort of line of thought that um is drawn in the same direction. You can see someone in, in the situ- in that situation and uh, trying to do that sort of evil, uh, making it the same way. Um, so, like that—that that is the the side effect of of Mia giving all this ground. It, 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 things take uh, these um, like worsening shapes uh, where they see they they they're not like the the like early uh claw arguments of like well like natalie is terrible i won't tell you how uh, yeah. or like like not getting into the weeds of things these are like truly bad and also like also almost common lines of thought 
uh, in terms of uh, how bad they are. Yeah, well, I mean, like, and again, like, with the argument that, like, it's wrong when it's applied as a blanket to a group, but, like, when I'm actually better equipped, like, it's the same, like, that is the, not only would, like, the civil warriors make that argument, but, like, the people running, like, the fucking convent schools would make that argument about Mm. the indigenous children that they're kidnapping. Because Mm. they would say, well, no, we're just civilizing them. We're we're better equipped to raise these children, therefore we should. It is 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 the exact same fucking argument. Yeah. Uh, There is definitely something to get into with, like, the definition of better equipped. Yeah, Um, exactly. uh, I... uh, um, I went to this really cool uh, international sign language forum um, with uh, my dear friend uh, very recently. Um, and uh, it's touching on uh, in disability spaces um, how someone can uh, appear disabled because um, r- really but rather because they are being held to uh, a hostile standard. So yeah, yeah. like, for example, when... Uh, like there, there's a lot, like a long history of people being, uh, that are, that have learned English as their second language being, uh, diagnosed as dyslexic. And then it being like, oh, like that community has huge numbers of dyslexia. Um, but then you just, you know, follow that line of thought a bit further and you realize it's the second language, uh, and that they, uh, yeah, didn't exactly. necessarily grow up around it. And then that's no, not, that's no longer dyslexia. It's no longer a problem with the person that's they like you are evaluating them through the lens of their english language proficiency um and um like that that is part of the trick that mia is pulling here where like she and as far as moving the goalpost goes like the the way that she is like the the shape of her hierarchy (laughs) um which she built conveniently has her at the top yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah. like that—that's the—that's the supremacist outlook of yeah. like, well, I have all these things that are true about me, and I think that means that I'm best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, history is written by the uh, by the winners, I guess. Yeah, like she mm. is defining, she is defining the goal, and then immediately saying, "Well, therefore, I fit it because I've defined it." Look, I scored <laughs> in this exactly. game that I made up. Yeah. Uh, like uh, the, I, I, I think this is a a, a great. So th- obviously, th- this notion better equipped is very unfair, and the way that she's yeah. talking about this is very unfair, um, because she's trying to frame it in the way that she is this, um, like, uh, downtrodden best option where people just can't seem to see that she did the right thing and that she should still be allowed to do what she had done um so the the fact that this next quote you pulled is about being fair mia took a deep breath in the end it wasn't a fair fight they didn't even come after me for rip part of natalie's plan to keep the media from jumping on that well she wouldn't pursue me for that i guess i mean first of all like mia sweetheart every time you've talked to people about this they have 100% not taken your side. Nobody takes your side. No matter what was going to happen here, nobody would have taken your side. We can all like objectively admit that Mia did an immoral thing. Mm-hmm. Um, she did a very moral thing when she took uh, Ripley out of that car. And then she did a very immoral thing when she kept Ripley out of that car and mm-hmm. took her for herself. Um, like, there's just no way... Yeah, like, even in this fair fight that she's envisioning, she loses. Like, mm. she doesn't see that she would lose. But yeah, she and, doesn't. But then, and 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 following on from that, like she, <laughs> the 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 idea that um that it's it's wrong for uh, Natalie to have pulled um what is basically an Al Capone maneuver of like getting the criminal on like like indicted on something else uh, that they've done yeah. that's criminal rather than the thing that it's, you don't necessarily yeah. have a good case for um it's so good the, the like the, the <laughs> they didn't even come after me for rip what did they come after you for mia the the the, the, the bombing of the school the the the, the murders <laughs> the like because we like, the, I, the, I like think the, it was just the child kidnapping. 
the 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 kidnapping at the very beginning uh, or like the, the, okay no good. just the just the just the civil warriors ones it's i think leg- so they got you for one crime that you did and that's not yeah, which fair you kidnapped six children because i'm a serial criminal so therefore you should have tried yeah. to get me for all of my crimes i worked hard on yeah. those <laughs> oh it's just ridiculous like mia what the fuck are you thinking Okay. Um, but also, this is such this is such a base moment for Natalie. Truly, like, yeah, this is this is truly where I was like, oh, did she ever let plan on letting Ben make his documentary? Like, was she straight up like, like he's like, like she just had plans the whole time that was just like, oh no, Ben's never making this shit. Like, I'm not going to tell him that, but he's never making this shit. Um, like, and just like, le- like I love the idea that she led him along and like dangled this idea of the documentary in front of him with no plan to ever mm. allow him to profit off of her and Rip's misery. Uh, and like, it kind of ties back <laughs> into like, in Ben's first chapter, I think, um, he notes that like, oh, I could work on the, like on the documentary notes and stuff, but oh, Natalie doesn't really like it when I work on the documentary. And it's like, it made a lot of sense then because obviously she's more focused about finding Rip, which mm. Yeah, reasonable. Um, but like, it, yeah, I, I I love the idea that even in hindsight, it was like she was like, oh, he's wasting his time. He's never making that fucking documentary. Um, yeah, this the idea that she was never planning to let him have it. That is, is like it makes me enjoy <laughs> Natalie a lot more in hindsight. That is not the direction I would have thought you'd take this in. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I I love how you turned a, a Natalie W into a Ben L. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. fuck the, you, Ben. <laughs> the, the way that I saw it is that, like, in order for um, like Natalie to take Mia to uh, prison for something besides what happened with Rip, um, uh-huh. Natalie needs to feel like like big enough about that scenario that she doesn't need someone to sit down and like prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt and like get it in um, like uh, black on white that Mia was wrong and Natalie was right. Um, Like if I I see this as like a a willingness to accept like victory uh, without needing approval as it were. Um, And like, Natalie has this moment uh, in like quite quite recently in six dot four where where she's breaking down in the car and she's finally admitting that she did make a mistake um, and she was in a very vulnerable yeah. place and she's like very like she needed a lot of help and she wasn't getting it and so she made that mistake and so really we should be forgiving of her for that um, and uh, the the. Uh, Digging down on that, it was only um, fifteen seconds. Like like that that t- the 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 great argument over the time window wasn't serving her and wasn't something that she needed to do. Um, yeah. So in in my mind, like, would the Natalie of um, like the very beginning of the story on the war path um, be able to settle for like like not having um, a, a like a, a certain uh, follow through of that, like or taking it to court. I don't know. Um, I th- I think that um, the Natalie at that like re- re- would need more approval, and the Natalie that like n- that needed the documentary on some level and needed Ben on some level is someone that needed someone to say, uh, you didn't do anything wrong and uh this was an evil person and uh you'll you'll be okay now but natalie just knows that so she doesn't need that to be confirmed for externally um and i think yeah, that's a big I step mean, for healing you know yeah like, i really the, like that i like that take i really mm-hmm. enjoyed that um you, yeah, co- you could it's, could it's not have beaten a... you couldn't have beaten the monster this way um if you yeah. were in a worse place um so um it's 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 nice um i I, and i think it also could have come from a place of natalie like frothing at the mouth and doing literally anything possible to destroy mia and that's a bit less optimistic but i just wanted to note that as a possibility (laughs) um in which case still based natalie incredible work i'm I'm very proud of her for uh taking a lesson out of 6.4 in the case of destroying davy um yeah no i yeah i really enjoy that perspective um 
yeah, I think that's really cool. I like that. Mm. Um, yeah, and then we have uh, Mio like wondering why why she's uh why Natalie's pissed at Ben and and she says revenge for being so short sighted with the judge, the Cavalcanti's, and stirring up the civil warrior business. Mia asked. Maybe. I think it's more that Ripley comes before Ben in Natalie's priorities, so she's protecting Ripley. And I'm like, I love that Mia doesn't even consider, like, Natalie as like, maybe this complex figure that wants the best for Ripley. She's trying to be a good mom. She's just like, ah, Rip- mm. Natalie must be bitter and angry. Well, it's it's important. Like, I am bitter and angry. It's important for moment. Mia that Natalie be a... A, a, a bad true, person. It's a, 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 as, yeah. as she said, be insignificant. Be, like, just yeah. have nothing to give but hate. Um, yeah, be a, yeah, and just be a shitty, a shitty mom, basically, and a kind of a shitty person. Yeah. Um, and then I'm Geo. Oh, Geo, I I really like this part, but it's very funny. Um, yeah. So then we get into talking about Tear a bit, um, and Geo says you should still leave him where he is on the ranch with me. He's got a group of people who adore him and are acting like parents. A village. I'll do my best to be family to him. He's my son, Geo. His parents were monsters. And I'm like, this is so fun that like Geo is making hmm. the fucking same argument that Mia made about who is more capable. And Pretty Mia much. is completely incapable of saying that, that this is the, the yeah, a, a perfect mirror for her own argument. Like if if there were ever a yeah. child that needed a village to be raised by, like it takes <laughs> a village to raise a kid. Um, it's probably Ripley, actually. It, it, uh, it could be Ripley in terms Tier of the therapy second. side of things, but it's definitely Tear yeah. in terms of yeah. um, uh, it's definitely it's definitely Tear in terms of the Tear the Terrible. Yeah, but yeah, no, I really, I really like this because this is the exact same fucking thing. Um, it's the the argument that Geo is making is that when I'm more capable of raising this child. Um, because there's so, so many people, um, we have so much, like, we have so many resources together, we have so many people together that can look after, um, him, and Mia is just like, he's my son, like, you know, the people who birthed him, like, his original, like, his parents were monsters, um, therefore now he's mine, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I, I love this note of possessiveness, and I don't, like, obviously I get the argument that Geo is making, but, like, yeah, it's, it's the same argument, so I don't, necessarily agree with it because i mean mia's right it it that's her son um it's, yeah it's interesting like uh yeah if if mia had been aware that like more lucid about what geo was saying and geo was putting things in very simple terms uh-huh. um if if mia had noticed that tear is getting possibly a best case scenario for him as a person yeah. even um like that you don't you don't usually get to have a kid and then go i think it would be really nice if you had the best support network <laughs> um, i you don't usually yeah. get to go like look, look look left and look right and, and look in the eyes and say i actually know just where to put you um uh, yeah. like you usually have to like try to become that space uh and um learn the, the skills required uh and so what does like, like but that that would be if mia was like thinking in, in the way that um that natalie has begun to for ripley of, like what is best for yeah. my child so yeah what the the thing that mia claims she thinks but yeah uh which, yeah uh, as, as you said mm-hmm. she's very possessive yeah um so so here's the thing that ought to be like a like a- any other, like any, tr- like one, any true parent, like, no, like no true Scotsman sort of argument. But the my, <laughs> my thinking is that Geo describes here the best case scenario, and Mia's reply is not thank you. It's not yeah. fantastic. It's not I'm so relieved because again she didn't have a plan for what would happen to Tear without her there. She just planned to succeed. Um, yeah. It, 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 she replies. He's my son because his parents were monsters. Um, yeah. And his parents aren't in that equation. They're gone now. Uh, yeah, they're long gone. Yeah. So so the ju- it really, his parents were monsters is justifying he's my son. And that's just, yeah. that's the possessiveness coming forward. 
so if if it, if if Mia was in like had the lucidity or the like um the peace to go well that's good i'm i'm i i would prefer that to to my looking after this child because i want what is best for the child um uh-huh. it like having have that had that possibility directly given to her directly handed to her she reflects back that's not good enough for me because i have to be the one looking after him um yeah but i think i think that's very normal for parents i think the idea that like you know you, you should not be involved in your child's life um is for most parents apart like mm. Yeah, the idea that someone else is taking your child away and raising them instead is is apparent. Um, yeah, it, like yeah, like Gio is like un uncritically doing an an amazing thing by looking after Tio. Because um, Tio is in that position. But, his parents were monsters. That's true. Yeah, his parents were monsters. Both sets. Um, <laughs> so far. Um, and he currently doesn't have anywhere to like go or anything like that. Um. So he needs, he needs to be cared for at this at this point in time, and that's what Geo is doing, and that's fucking amazing. But mm. I also see Mia's point of like, well, not even Mia's point because it's the opposite of ne- Mia's point from earlier. But this is like Natalie's point of like, that's still like my son that you are like taking away, um, like just because you think you can make, just because you think you can give him a better life, that doesn't give you the right to like cut me off from him Hmm. um yeah yeah it's 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 complex basically um i do think that that is like yeah ultimately the difference between natalie mia and the cast that aren't parents because Uh i think in like mind of probably writer uh this is and and i would say a, a, a reader that isn't these characters the default would be um, this is an optimi- optimization algorithm. The, the question is, what is the best yeah. way for this to be? Um, yeah, and that o- overlooks like the like Natalie's deep requirement of that's that's my kid, like and uh, yeah. and Mia's fresh requirement of that is my kid. <laughs> I, yeah, I, exactly. I, I, um, I I I I picked up the baby, so no tasties backsies. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. I. I, I love that little, this little uh, exchange here because it's just, it's so perfect. It's Gio doing what Mia has done to others to Mia and Mia can't see that. Um, and Gio is doing it in a relatively good way. Um, but like the fact that her plan is just like to keep Tear forever um, from his mum is, well, yeah, it's the same thing that Mia did. Um hmm. Yeah, which, look, that's probably a hot take, and I'm probably going to get roasted um, in the comments. So, I don't know. I guess roast me if you would like to, but, like, I get because reading this Isn't that and why you like, do oh. this podcast? <laughs> Apparently. No, but, like, I get reading this and being like, oh, Geo is objectively right here because she's, you know, looking after Tia. She's giving him a village. Like, she's raising him really nice, like, and really good. Um, and Mia's and Carson are fucking monsters, and they shouldn't be raising children, et cetera, et cetera. But, like she's making a judgment call the same that Mia did, um, mm-hmm. that she thinks that Mia is not capable of being a parent and should yeah. not be a parent and therefore is saying that, like, even after you get out, please leave, like, this child with me because I will make a better parent um, yeah. to them than you. Um, this yeah. next bit is a great catch. Oh, it's so good. Um, so, yeah, so we have this... We, yeah, we're in the, we're deep in the conversation about like Geo being scared about being in the crosshairs and being frightened that Mia is gonna like flip on her and like kill her. Um, and then we get that's insane. Mia told the girl, and I'm like, ah, oh, I love that. I love that Mia like starts flipping between Geo and the girl for a couple of times here, and she, like the fact that she's just like depersoning her. It's mm. perfect. And like, I think we talked about it um twenty minutes ago when we were we were recording the other part of our. Uh, episode um but, oh, but like yes for certain yes definitely i uh, so I, I definitely remember exactly what i said um <laughs> but i think i i was talking about how like mia like loves like and is possessive of 
not just Geo, but like Valentina, like the person that is her daughter. Um, yeah. And it's... like, it doesn't matter what name she has because that person is still her daughter. Yeah. But that person is not the girl. The girl is perfectly just like de de uh, identified. You know, like mm. that's just a person on the other side of the table that is like fuck, like you know, stealing your child. Therefore, is an entirely valid person to be in the fucking crosshairs. Like, yes, Geo should be fucking terrified of Mia, um, especially in these moments where Mia, yeah, hits her with mm. the girl. I really loved this. Um, and I and think it happens like two or three times in this it, conversation. And it, it's so good. It, it is a, like, one of the uh, many symptoms of just how much Mia has begun to spiral. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly. Like saying, saying the quiet part out loud or like, I, I, as we, as we were saying in the last hour or so uh, about um, <laughs> Mia being pushed to a point past her best justifications, where she like yeah. f- like felt the virtues that she would have defined herself by loosen and no longer be the terms by which she was living and thinking. Yeah. Um we have this 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 next part. Uh, really it's like this, this, this there's a whole sequence of them. Um mm-hmm. uh like for one we have uh like much like the like hey tears in a really good situation. Um yeah. you, like why you could just let that be and her not being upset that. You have I don't think you should uproot Ripley from the new life she's building either. Followed by there's no way she's happier with Sean. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like it's the, the only thing that now matters is the happiness, mm. like about how happy she is with whoever. It's like, yeah, like the possessiveness has won, like over her main good mum thing, which was her ability to give her children fucking agency because mm. she doesn't even consider, oh, Ripley wants to stay, stay with Sean. She considers, oh, I could make Ripley like happier. Yeah. Therefore. Uh, I'm I'm the better option. Uproot her from her life, yeah. and and furthermore, it's not. Um, I I I think she I think she'd be happier with me. It's there's no way she's happier. Yeah, with Sean. yeah. She would. Yeah, she would be happier with me. Um, um and I. It, it is a a full a full hearted belief. In, yeah. in 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 the same way that like, uh, Mia, and like no no part of what Mia was saying about raising Ripley was getting across to Natalie because. Uh-huh. It was it was an impossibility. They're, 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 the the well has been poisoned. Um, yeah, and we now have Mia being in the same place. Uh, yeah, the exact same fucking reaction. <laughs> yeah, and she's she's just going feral. <laughs> yeah, she's fucking losing it. So we get like Mia's hand shook a little until she gripped it hard in the other, and it's like I love these moments, and there's so many of them in this in this part of like Mia looking fucking terrifying to anyone around her and she's just got no clue like because we've seen how like geo sees her sometimes as like the clenched fist and like she's so much of a clenched fist now that like her hand is shaking as she's sitting at this table and she has to like physically hold herself back and it's like fucking christ like if you yeah if you were geo you'd be fucking pissing yourself like and and she is uh, yeah (laughs) yeah she's terrified um Um I, I, I loved how it's um it's it's geo looked scared <laughs> um yeah like, yeah so this oh, next one is like how strange <laughs> yeah um so yeah mia like thinking about herself and like another part of her felt like it had been lost to something bottomless so cold it numbed geo looked scared the girl spoke up can you give me some feedback some clue about what you're thinking or feeling are you mad are we enemies and it's like so fucking good i'm like Geo is fucking terrified of Mia, who's giving nothing away except for, like, I am so stressed and ready to snap. And Mia is, like, validating that fear, not for Geo, but for the audience by completely depersoning Geo and being, and, like, implicitly to us saying, well, that's not my daughter. Um, mm. You know, that's not my family. Um, the girl is not my family, but Geo is. Um, and you can just kind of feel her warring within herself there about, like, what the fuck she's going to do if she's going to snap or not yeah mm. it's it's so good um and and then yeah. like mia's hail mary of mm-hmm. geo uh she reaches reached across the table laying her hand over geo's geo flinched a bit i love you i might not have been your family but you were mine for a little while i'm not your enemy i'm not a good enough liar to be angry and hide it 
you're harder to interpret than you think you are. You give off this vibe, like you're about to lunge across the table and tear my head off. Especially now. <laughs> yeah, it's so... I love Geo making this, like, textual, because... Well, I mean, it's already... Like, we're already seeing this, like, from the way that she's reacting, but obviously not the way that she's thinking. Like, that Mia is straight up just cracking to pieces right now and barely holding it together. Um, and obviously we see the aftermath of that in a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, and, like, the fact that Mia doesn't even realize that, you know, she's like, oh, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a good enough liar to be angry and hide it. It's like, bitch, you're not hiding anything. Like, right now you look like you're ready to kill someone, and mm. you are ready to kill someone. And I love um, this sort of like, Freudian The angriest slip. that she's ever been. I love this yeah. Freudian slip of, I might not have been your family, but you were mine. Where it's like, oh, but yeah. you were my family. But that's not what she yeah. says. She says you were mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it, that is a good Freudian slip. Um, and, that's that's good old Mia. And she's just, she's like, as, as, as you say, she's just like, and as Geo notes, it's like she's, she's not a, a self, very self-aware about this. Um, no, absolutely not. Like, she's picks up completely, yeah. That she's clenching her fist and she unclenched it. Mm -hmm. Geo looks so scared now. What was she supposed to say? She'd wondered if she'd been driven by some desire for all of this to be some kind of referendum on the subject of the kids. And she hadn't even considered Gio. Mia Convinced. had to remind herself to unclench her fist again. Ah, oh, so fucking good. Like, the fact that Mia is just completely unaware of her body. Like, she's so badly breaking down and completely unaware. Like... She, yeah, because she doesn't even note like that she clenches her fist again, and like that's the entire you know like that's her Sorry. unclenching her fist, and then everything that's written there. Sorry, I, I got that quote wrong. It's and she hadn't even convinced Geo. Yes, you, you did. Um, <laughs> um, that's fine. Like the the clenching of the fist happens as like, she realizes not even the person that I saved is buying into this. Yeah, and then she yeah has to like, and yet she thinks she's a good enough liar to be angry and hide it like. I mean, she's not, <laughs> you know, but, like, that's because she's not hiding being angry right now. She's, yeah. Mm. It's, 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 it's weird down. scenario, because usually when someone says, I'm not a good enough liar to be angry and hide it, it's because they are pissed and they are lying to you about being a good enough liar. Yeah. But actually, yeah. Mia's wrong about um, <laughs> the fact that she's angry. It's like, I'm, I'm not a good yeah. enough liar to be angry and hide it, she says, exploding with rage. <laughs> um, exactly, yeah. And, like... The, this this idea of the referendum of the subject of the kids um, yeah I, I, like because she has pulled that thing like with the um with the anarchy radio people yeah she kind of tried to explain it to them and felt like she, they would be on her side and obviously they were like oh what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> yeah um it's I, I i think in the same way that natalie um being able to uh, except that she did, she did make a mistake, and that was okay. Um, uh -huh. uh, has helped her to move on uh, and start to um, acclimate to a new world and make real change happen. Um, the subject of the kids is like is is Mia's like th thing that she needs to accept the uh, truths about before that she can yeah. move on as a person. And instead, she's yeah. holding it and sinking with it. Um, yeah, because... she's saying, eh, no, mm. if I just explained everything, yeah. they'd be on my side. Because it all seems so reasonable yeah. in my head. Um, exactly. And um, the this this next quote, I feel like, is the, the, the sort oh, of natural so extension of that good. attitude. Of, like, yeah. Mia had advised Geo um that like okay we might be able to act on that dark urge you know that that uh -huh. sensation to want addy to not be anything but okay like and like never be okay again yeah. um and so geo is quite reasonable in asking was what i did to addy more you than my dad uh and i love it like i'm genuinely a little bit disappointed in, in us for not pulling this out because yeah like this was mia and it's the same and i i mentioned uh earlier this today when we were doing our recording um that uh -huh. like the way natalie took <laughs> the way natalie took about davy was very mia as well like just desperate and violent and visceral like that is how mia 
fights when she has to get up in it. Um, mm. And it's very not Davy. Um, but also, but I, yeah, I just like yeah. Uh, well, one thing we did talk about at the time um, was how the Addy uh, event, like uh, the actual attacking of her, like with the, uh-huh. the start at least, is off screen. Um, and yeah, and, Geo... it, and then when it is on screen, it's very like yeah. uh, it's um, disassociation. Yeah. yeah, and and Geo is suddenly made aware, and as just as we as readers are made aware that something has gone horribly wrong and that she is doing something Uh horrible and evil. Um, And we know that as far as Geo doing this thing to hurt Addie, um, it's pretty early in terms of like us getting to see her as a character. So it's reasonable. We might follow her line of thought and see it as like, Oh, it's, it's Davy's influence. This is her being afraid that she's like her father. But as far as it resembling Mia, when Mia stole Ripley, that happened off screen too. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah. I, again, it was like that dissociation of like, well, she put the girl back in the car seat. Um, and then it was, yeah. Oh. Mm, and so, and this is like, I suppose the ultimate question that Gio is posing to Mia um, of like, if, if a parent has this main affect of you are uh, inviting someone into the world you're supporting them but you are also impacting who they will be and they will draw lessons from you um is is mia as far as influence goes like what she does to people um is she the sort of person that brings out more evil like is the is this what uh, Ripley yeah. would have gotten if Ripley was uh, getting into teenage years. If like this is what Tyr, how Tyr might have turned out. Um, yeah, I mean it's definitely possible. It's definitely like Mia has her influence on people. Mm. Uh, and yeah, um, we, if yeah, if the like like that this is the, this is the same thing that Mia hasn't made peace with the fact that she has done these sorts of deeds in the past. Um, yeah. Like the the way that she has uh, caused violence and done crime, like the, the coming from this dissociation, um, like like barely engaging and even forgetting sometimes the the things that she has done wrong, like deciding, for example, uh-huh. that Natalie wouldn't get a second chance. If that's yeah, the way yeah. that you are building your world, and it's the way that you're teaching, you know, it, it will be the way that you're teaching your kids to build their world. Um, and yeah, if exactly. Mia's sense of self is built on being a not just a good parent but a better parent than anyone else uh, to, to justify those actions then you can see this sort of robberous of actually if, if, in order for Mia to accept that she has done something wrong um, she needs to accept that she has been a bad parent <laughs> um, and, yeah which she can't do and a great example of this is that she supported uh, uh, Geo in becoming more hostile, um, and yeah. uh, like, and this question of was what I did to Addy more you than my dad? If the answer were yes, and if Mia was able to say yes, I think it's, I think so. I think that was my influence. I think I enabled you to do that. Um, then Mia might be on the road to real mending, um, but it would yeah, knock she, over she so much her, of her sense of self. Well, like, yeah, her entire sense of self is, like, because when I sell uh, Claw to people, I'm like, you know, this is a story about crime and motherhood. Um, Like, that's, like, the core, one of the core fucking themes. And, like, same to Mia. Like, the crime and everything is secondary to her. It's motherhood, which is, that's Mia's sense of self. That is her, like, everything. Hmm. Um, Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah, um, I yeah. She would have to be. She would have to do what Natalie was able to do in six point four, and come through it and start becoming a better person. And I don't think she <laughs> ever gets there. I don't know. After the story, <laughs> I don't feel like Mia is getting to that place. I it's think a, it's a it's in, a very yeah. different form of acceptance that Mia comes yeah. to. Um. Yeah, to, and, to reference uh to reference 
worm, she pulls an Amy, I would say. Yeah, doubles down. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, the... <sighs> how to put this? Um, Mia does this this one last good deed, right? She... It's, yeah. it's 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 partially involved with this last like hail mary of uh hey geo you could get me out of here if you want <laughs> you have all my resources um yeah and um there there is this note of um like mia tries to open up about like what resources are there and it turns out that geo has actually managed to already get most of those resources and yeah, she's just not sure what to. She yeah. hasn't really looked at them. I think. Very I, much. I I love sure that as like a uh, kids outgrowing um, parents or yeah. like reaching adulthood. Yeah, it was like, really I'm good. actually not dependent yeah. on you anymore. Um, yeah, I can actually do this myself. And um, um, yeah, then but like the the reason that Mia brings it up now, or at least how she presents it, um, is as a part of that, you should be able to find the folder with what I was able to find on your other mother, um, and yeah, which is. Uh, I love it. I, I, I love that she uses the term other mother. Yeah. Like, because, yeah, Gio is her daughter still. Hmm. Um, which, like, ties into that depersoning of, like, Mia would never hurt her sweet daughter Gio. But, like, the girl. Hmm. She'll tear she the girl to tear pieces. the girl to pieces. Yeah. Yeah. She'll fucking kill the girl straight up. Yeah. Because um, Gio, she feeling. would never hurt. This, that, that's yeah, my exactly. ex-daughter. Um, yeah. But, like... He, he, this is what I'm trying to, what I've been trying to get at with this note of like someone being pushed past the brink of their good virtue, um, is that Mia is now in a position where this good deed of hey, um, I I know that there is a way I can help you, and I know it's a way that's important to you, and um, I I leave it in your hands on whether or not you want to pursue that, but I enable you uh-huh. to do that, which is great parenting, really. Um, is that. Like from from this point, it can only be seen as manipulative. It can only be seen as like something that is like, part of that hail mary. Um, and if if Mia had been able to feed this part of herself and build into it, uh, I don't. And she never been pushed to this point. Um, it wouldn't really have been in question whether this was a good deed. Um, it would have been absolutely yeah. good. It would have been a like a a, f- um, a wonderful thing to have done. Um, and like, I, I, I kind of want to like visualize what I'm getting at here as like a diamond in the muck of like, like, this is still a diamond. Uh, it's just the fact that it's covered in all this muck, uh, separately. <laughs> um, like if you, if you had never taken what Mia had to offer and shoved it through, uh, the earth, uh, and made it worse and then like, not just made it worse, but then refused to clean it up and take it, uh, take it to a place where it can, be, can get even worse still, then maybe like, these sorts of like motes of good would have been redeeming, um, but she's just too damned at this point. She's she's been pushed yeah. too far. Oh Mia. Oh yeah. Which uh, I guess speaking of oh Mia. <laughs> oh. Oh uh, yeah. Mia wanted Mia to wanted offer to offer. A hug. Oh. <laughs> I've been stealing all your quotes. You do it. You have been, you bitch. Uh, <laughs> Mia wanted to offer a hug, but she wasn't sure she could avoid breaking down if Gio said no. Ugh, oh, it's the call me mama moment. It's just Mia doesn't mm. reach out because she can't handle the uh, the possibility of rejection. Mm. Um, and it's like, yeah, Mia like thinks she's like, oh yes, I'll offer a hug, but it's like, no, Mia, you need a hug. It's you're not, yeah. When you mm. offer someone a hug, you're like, I think you would like or you would need a hug, therefore I'm going to hug you, compared to, oh, fuck, I desperately need a hug. Please give me a hug. Um, yeah. And, and oh, it's the second one right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, full circle in the worst way. Ah, uh, yes. My, how the so two have tables. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. A suitable segue um, to next quote, which you can read. Yes. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I did pull it, um, as I do all the quotes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for all your hard work in getting these notes together for this wonderful thing that we have made. Yes, we do. We, To be fair to everyone uh, listening, we do actually work together on all of the notes. I just, I do the chronological ones. Like, mm. yeah, that's just something that I, that I take on. So 
she does do stuff here. <laughs> God, I that do some things. So backhanded. Um, um, no, I, you, you set up most of the document uh, over time, and like uh, you get, you generally get all the discussion question answers and everything, and set that all up. Which is I, great. I like to think that I mostly just sit around and sound pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and you do the uh, like the chapter uh, summaries, which is fucking excellent because you're really good at them. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you for um, taking all these notes because uh, my attention span is not wide enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sp- speaking of, let's get onto those more of those notes. Um, so we have, uh, as Geo is like leaving, we have, if Geo said something, it might have been inaudible with the louder conversations in the room and that lingering ringing in Mia's ear from the gunshot. It might have been that Mia's focus was elsewhere to the extent it was uh, like a small blackout. It might have been that Geo said nothing at all. And I'm like, I love this as, like, the mark of non-closure. Like, this is not done in Mia's mind, so we leave the end of this conversation with with an unclear ending. So, like, mm. regardless of what Gio actually said, like, and regardless of what Mia, like, said to Gio, like, it's not done in Mia's mind. Like, she is still going to be consumed by this. Mm. Um, because, yeah, like, if, if we had gotten a good buy at the end, like, you know, that's very indicative of, like, okay, this part of, like, the story is over. But we didn't we get this very unclear unsure ending um so like even though literally in this story this part of the story is over like we can kind of extrapolate from that that in mia's mind this part of the story is not fucking over um she is yeah the lingering ringing in mia's ear from the gunshot has been a beat that has tapped from arc one oh it's so good i love i've loved every time it comes up yeah and you know like the fact that in the moment of murdering that uh that that escapee um nathaniel i think yeah um mia had this mood of that was like more intimate and would stay with me for like the foreseeable future like for 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 longer and uh, than like for for a whole whole life long and it was more intimate than like some of my most intimate human relationships um so just to, to deliver on that notion, it's still she's still got tinnitus. Um, yeah, and yeah. I, I, yeah. What does that I like? What it. does that symbolize? Well, you know, some sometimes when you do something really wrong, it just leaves you fucked up, and it stays that way. <laughs> yeah, and I think especially with things like murder, it should sit with you for a long time, uh, mm. e- ever. Um, yeah. But it's a it's yeah. it, it's interesting because um, you know we have if, as as far as talking about Mia as a character that is living with disability, um, and like the great history, uh, the not so great history of um, disability being conflated with like uh, moral judgment, um, of like um, like I think it's I think it's a very Christian attitude of like ah a, a mangled body suggests a mangled mind and like that being yeah like a trope of theater um i i love this as like an innovation on that where um it's it's not that mia is a uh a bad person because she has tinnitus for like like, like the most closed loop of like oh you were born ugly so you must have an ugly soul kind of thing yeah Um, yeah it's that this this the the lingering noise has never been addressed uh, outside of her mind, it's not been talked about. Um, she hasn't um, resolved what it's connected to. It, it works symbolically to connect us back to that moment without necessarily being an indictment on like who Mia is, or like necessarily being like acclaimed as the source of the problem. Um, yeah. And like, I I I like it as a a, a more nuanced way of doing it because. Like, what would change the the context of that ringing in her ears? Um, if it was being heard in a really nice situation where everything was great, uh, dare I yeah. say, where uh, Gio could repeat herself and Mia could, would, would be able to ask, uh, what was that thing you said? But because yeah. things are so bad, that lingering ringing takes something from Mia's world even now. Um, and Ugh, it's like, it's so that following through on that deed and continuing to build on it has caused it to be a, some, some, something that is more permanent and has taken more than it would at first would have appeared. Cause you know, if you have, 
community and you have uh, people that love you, there's pretty much like nothing that can be that sort of obstacle. Um, yeah. Though tinnitus does suck. <laughs> tinnitus sucks. And you know who would know that? Wildbo. Yeah. <laughs> Wildbo Wild would know that tinnitus sucks. Um, yeah. Yeah. But no, I, I also have tinnitus and it's shit. Um, mm. and anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. So we get into our next quote of after Mia has left the area. Uh, this was a hell of noise and people. The commotion around this place played into the buzz of a headache. No, she couldn't tolerate this after all. Like, every Mia moment is fucking perfect. I love her, especially, like, that second, like, no, she couldn't tolerate this after all. It's, like, so perfect. It hits that same ominous, like, well, this is untenable. Like, you know she's about to fucking do something. Oh, it's just, it's perfect. And then we get uh, a 15-foot headfirst fall onto concrete. And I'm like, I love the capitalized fall here. Like, it's so... She knows what she's doing to this person. And also, like, this is part of, like, a big change, like, uh, another, like, big change in her life where she's, yeah, like, like accepting, well, yeah, doubling down on being a monster. Um, mm. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, she, it's a hell of noise and people, an angel falls, like, yeah. like, Mia is straight up and sent to hell. And what is that doing for her? Yeah. Not a lot of good. <laughs> No, no fucking good at all. She's getting worse, um, as one does when they're sent to hell. Um, and then, of course, we get... It still didn't feel like as though she'd done anything particularly wrong at any point. Oh, Mia, sweetheart. What's fucking wrong with you? <laughs> oh, babe. Oh, dear. Um, I love her so much. Um, she's so, such a dickhead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no... No ability to introspect at all, yeah. uh, our Mia. Um, yeah, which is why she's here. Um, why she's alone and is surrounded by enemies because she could never do the thing that Natalie did, which is say, oh, God, I made a mistake. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and then we get the the sequence in Solitary, which is fucking horrible. Mm. Um, so we get, but an interminable amount of time had passed. Like, I love, like, the way that Mia is going through one of her episodes without any ability to get the support that she needs and just, like, l- fully losing track of reality as her mind breaks down. And we're getting, like, these jumps of days. Like, it had been 15 days, and then the next paragraph is, like, day 12, tw- day 13, day 14. Um, Yeah, I don't know. It's so mm. fucking good. I... It's really hard to read, but it's really good. I... It's it it is the this just a description of absolute hell. There's a, a moment as we as we almost leave it behind um, uh-huh. that I want to dwell on. Um, yeah. But so we have this arrival of the civil warriors, um, and um the like they they're under new leadership uh a lot of the um inmates are excited and they get released um we have a uh, same as before but bigger a lot of cowards left patriots stayed um <sighs> yeah and like i th- think oh th- uh, geo was right things they got the civil warriors got more confident they uh uh got worse um and yeah we get this line of what's your name? Sheila Hardy. Uh-huh. That's not Sheila anything. That's Mia Hurst. Adele. Yeah. Um, uh. Do we think that Sheila Hardy is Mia's original name? Oh, that's cute. I hadn't considered that. And I like the idea. Um, I don't know <laughs> because then it goes from mia go, like just like throwing out a bs name to try and like change identities for the umpteenth time yeah to answering honestly yeah and then being consumed by her lifestyle like like but the consequences of her actions yeah yeah sheila hardy is the person that she was once and could have been but mia hurst is the is the monster that ended up in prison Mm. Um. Yeah, there is no. Yeah, uh, and look, I like that. I like the idea of like, yeah, there is no more Sheila Hardy. There is Mia Hurst. I 
that's a good pull. I really enjoy that idea. I don't know if it's true, but I like it. I it's headcanon, I guess, for me as as well now. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and speaking of a uh, Mia not getting away from being Mia, um, we have this comment from uh the person that breaks them out of the of solitary which is, shit went crazy. There were some special ops types in the prison undercover investigating some human trafficker on the sly. Three of them took out 20 of us before we locked them in and shut off the water there for a couple of days. And I'm like, it's I love this. Like, it's Mia not getting away from her legacy. Like, it's also, I guess, interesting to me that it's actually kind of possible that these guys would have tried to recruit Mia and, like, folded her into their miserable little pocket of pseudo-government. Um... Yeah, but I mean, it's also possible that that's, that they were just trying to like figure out if she was Mia, the one that has disappeared, you know, two hundred people, well, you know, yeah. fifty people over the last two years. Um, yeah, I also love it as a note of um, effectiveness in terms of these different regimes. Like, what what brought Claw America low? special ops like government like watchmen watching the watchmen um like yeah. hidden organizations hidden organizations what's brought it down um a, de- a degree of like a loss of trust and faith with institutions to the point that it is possible for um these agents to just be sieged they get shut off the and uh, they die uh after a couple days of uh dehydration um yeah like oh you were you were defeated by the masses because you you alienated them um yeah and like if if mia is like partially like resonant with the supremacist rhetoric of like a, a, a potent individual um and these special ops are another form of that of like oh wow like yeah we we get to decide what the government gets to do because we've been uh-huh. um, we're, we're competent enough um, if that rhetoric spreads wide, suddenly uh, this is this is the hostility that you get in return. Exactly. So then we get, I say we leave her. I have money, Mia said. I get out, I can send it to you. And I, I, it's like, it's so good that this is another moment of like, Mia, like money doesn't buy lo- loyalty. Like it doesn't buy ideology. They don't need money. They run the fucking government. And like, even then they wouldn't take your money and let you free. You stole some of their children. Like, this is the same thing that caused her downfall with Highlander and stuff. Like, just thinking that she could use resources to buy loyalty um, and buy people. And similar with Davey at the end, where he felt he could use fear to control people. And, yeah, like, he didn't have loyalty. Um, He didn't have people that actually fucking cared. Yeah, um, and also apparently digital yeah. banking is down, which is fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, also the digital banks are down. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And then of course we get this moment of this like double down of this above moment where we get, would anyone come if most of the prison had evacuated? And I'm like, ah, Highlander. If only you were better to him. He, you know that he would be right. No, I, I said Highlander. I think it's just Highland, isn't it? It's been, sorry. It's oh, well, been I, I, I always say Highlander been. because in my mind, he's like um, Homelander. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's probably sort of yeah. cut from the Captain America Patriot, like uh, Superman, like, oh, what if there was yeah. just one really cool guy kind of cloth, yeah, except he he's pretty cool, kind of disabused and he's not super powered and he's, um, like so, so you know, a riff on that paragon. Um, yeah. So, but he's Max Highland, and uh, I bet, I bet um, Max and Spence could have taken time away from their busy vacation. Um, yeah. With uh, to bust in, me out. Uh, to to bust me out, so that they could all go have uh, tropical drinks um, uh, with those like little umbrellas and coconuts uh, in oh, the rapidly perfect. sinking islands um, around the world. Yeah. Yeah, I. Yeah, and, like, this is just one of those moments where, like, she doesn't even think about, like, all of the... Like, she, like, considers, like, yeah, but this next quote, she's like, what did she build? What lasting ties? What bridges remained unburnt enough that someone would cross them and find her? And it's like, yeah, like, none, really. Like, you had those people. You had Highland. You had Bolden. You could have put time and energy and care into it, and you didn't. You just trusted that they would be there for you only cared about the money really um 
yeah. And it's like, this is just really the overarching question for her and Carson. Like, they're both competent and devoted to each other, but they tried to stand, like, as an island, just the two of them alone. They didn't instill the loyalty that they needed to in the people that they cared about. Um, yeah. yeah. So, speaking of being uh, let out, um, once she was done squinting against the glare of the flashlight, she met the bottled glass green eyes of the man who held it. It's like, ah, oh, Ben moment. Ah, oh, fuck you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I, I find it funny that you could, be- you could bear to read that line. Um, the, the yeah. fact, sorry, bear to read that line. Oh, uh, uh, and anyway, very good. Um, yeah. Um, this is such a choice. Um, yes. For for one, I, I I like that we get payoff to like just a reminder. Ben's eyes are crazy. Um, yeah, yeah. Like like so th- so that we can have this moment of like, oh my god, Ben. Um, yeah, like it's recognize so like, as soon as I read bottle glass green, I was like, oh shit, it's Ben. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Um, like an excellent oh shit moment that uh you know doesn't um like interrupt the flow of this of like like yeah. Mia's mind being in this like heavily internalized and terrible state. It's not like oh look another human being finally. It's yeah, um, the bottle grass green eyes of the man who held it. It's it's depersonalized. Um, but um, the 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 implied shit that Ben has had to be has had to go through in order to end up here. Um, yeah, I've just like so good. Truly, like okay, so like oh no, my passion project uh, uh, with with Natalie to get a claim and uh, it's 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 gone down the water. Oh, terrible! I feel betrayed. I feel like I've wasted my time. Like all of those are um, things that would would bother like a a, a normal person, and uh, like th- <laughs> those are very civil problems to be having. This is a very uncivil situation. So, what has Ben been uh, like? What? what d- marinating in after his encounters with Mia that would lead him to come here. And it's this really good point yeah. uh, that he got from talking to Eve and he got from talking to Mia of, I should not be your focus. Um, like, like, or, or rather in case of Eve, I should be your focus. Like, like if, if you are trying to do good in the world with your method, you need to shed light on the things that are, uh, are going to help. Um, yeah. So, so, Ben has been dwelling on this and he goes to Mia. That's how bad the situation is. Um, he doesn't go <laughs> yeah, to Ryder. I, yeah. Um, I, I also, there is an alternative view of this that, yeah, there is an alternative view of like why Ben is here. Um, which is like, and I, this one kind of gives me some hope. So it's probably not likely because of Ben and he's a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> don't cancel me um like the idea that ben has actually listened to what everybody has been telling him like you are culpable for things that happen like you have responsibility like putting me in that prison was i mean no no it wasn't good um but like coming to terms with the fact that like the the because he put me in the prison and knowing now that like the entire fucking state has collapsed and like the um the at least locally the civil warriors are in charge like he would know that that would basically mean that mia would be fucked like she's probably dead um if not you know going to die like and that's on him like that's just that's just yeah because of his actions that's where mia has ended up and she's going to die because of it Mm. Um, so I like the idea that he has kind of come to terms with Ah. the fact that his actions have consequences and he's here to either try and mitigate the consequences of his actions, which is good, or at least witness them, which is also good. Hmm. I I hadn't, I I genuinely, it registered to me as the only possibility is that Ben needs Mia for something. Um, Yeah, which one of us is the bigger Ben hater now? (laughs) Oh, it's me. I mean, he, I mean, he's the one that got her into prison. Like, yeah. So he is. I mean, like, I could also see the the point of view of like, yeah, Ben's here and he just kind of wants to like burn shit down for vengeance. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So this, yeah, there's a couple of different ways to take it, and I think you could very reasonably take it a couple of different ways. I like the hopeful uh, view. Um, but then, of course, to counteract the hopeful view, we have, I wouldn't have let me out. 
Um, oh, and yeah, like God. like I've we've kind of talked about a couple of times. Yeah, I, I, it, it's a double down. Like it's that's just kind of what it is. Um, mm -hmm. She's and, she's and not what a saying, way to finish claw. Oh, right. Oh, so good. But yeah, like she's not saying like, oh, I have done bad things and I need to try and be better. She's saying, I am fundamentally an evil, horrible monster and I deserve to rot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, just, she's yeah, given up on all the good a... parts of herself. Um, because, um, yeah. you know, if it, I, I think when someone is, is truly down in the dumps, the way that you get control you feel like you have control is by blaming yourself um yeah absolutely so yeah. so yay mia is finally able to introspect but it's only in the <laughs> most corrosive way uh that yeah. will demolish yeah. any virtue that she might have had i wouldn't have yeah it's the same like i we, feel like it deserves yeah. now we um, like we talked about it with like natalie of like when natalie needed to like take ownership of the fact that like she had made a mistake with uh mm. camellia um but she wasn't doing that. Instead, she was saying, like, oh, I suck. I'm the worst. I'm such a piece of shit. Um, or, like, this, this like is now this is the same it. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And now this is the same thing Mia's doing. It's just, just saying, like, instead of saying, like, I fucked up. I have done horrible things. And I need to try and do good things to make life better for people. Um, instead, she's just saying, I'm a fucking horrible, evil monster. And I deserve to die. Um, and I guess that's just the way that it is. Oh no, we can't yeah. do anything about it. Um, yeah. I can't. I, yeah, there's no. Yeah, and if, obviously, if you have that mindset, your mindset is not how can I make life better for other people? How can yeah. I do good? It's just oh, it's all fuck. Which I, uh, shout out to Wild both for making a uh, very uh, uh, complicatedly bad person still not deserve the penal system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Like we've talked about it a couple of times, but obviously, mm. fuck the penal system, fuck the mm. way that this is all set up. It's horrible, and it's yeah, not dissimilar to how the current penal system works in a lot of places. Um, yeah. Mm. Well, okay. hey, it's America. Uh, yes, but we, it's we touched on America recently. Um, we touched on that very yes, recently, and today, been, even <laughs> even three hours ago, perhaps. Uh, oh God, this has been a long recording. Um, hey, climactic. A lot of good yeah, through. one one singular long recording that we have done today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's uh, sh shall we get into BS predictions? Yeah, this is our BS predictions where the story is finished. So instead, I'm we're gonna write a very small couple of sentence. Uh, my, I think actually mine's one sentence with a lot of commas because you know run on sentences. Yay. Mm. Um, uh, fanfic about what's going to happen next. Anyway, my fanfic is that Tyr and Rip start to work together as they get older, taking all the good that they've learned from Geo and the pissing in cowboys and combining that with the skills that have been left for them from Mia and Carson. And they start to fix the world piece by laborious piece. Mm -hmm. This, this, that's, is, that's, this yeah. is the good one. This is, this is, the, yeah. uh, get, this is the better world. Um, uh, and uh, I, would, I would pretty much want to see the same, um, but... Uh, I, I think it's really important uh, that um, what we see the story from from Mia's perspective um, uh -huh. that what happens is that Mia gets let out um, Mia and Ben go adventuring um, and then they get separated and then um, uh, in in the course of uh, Mia's quest to find the pistoling cowboys um, she uh, runs into Natalie who is also trying okay. to find Ripley um oh, because cute. I like in the this. course of this uh they, they have both lost track um and uh it ends up being uh the unlikely team of uh ben and uh ripley uh sorry B ben and uh, natalie and mia on a uh, sort of jojo's bizarre adventure road quest um to find out where everyone is and follow after the pistoling cowboys who have gotten onto their horses and rode away uh from the <laughs> civil warriors um, and, uh, you know, eventually they find out what Carson is up to. They like, like, uh, catch on to, uh, various unfolding mysteries. Um, and, uh, the, uh, uh, uh there's, there's a slow burn romance between, uh, Mia and Natalie. Um, and that, that's oh, what I, I like it, uh, because I, I think that that would be hilarious. And also, uh, you had accused me of only shipping men before. So now I'm shipping only women. <laughs> 
Cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I'm always on board a Yuri ship. I mean, and this then one's they find toxic, sex but... in the woods and they're yeah. happy. And that's what's most important. <laughs> And that's I mean, where I do enjoy it. To- that's where Tyr, to Ripley, so. and Geo are. They're staying with Sax. <gasps> Perfect. All right. That, those are our BS predictions for this week, and I think they're gonna. I think they're both gonna happen. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm. I'm really looking yeah. forward to the next book in the Claw series. Um, yeah. Clam. <laughs> clam. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus, that's bad. I like clam. <laughs> I, 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 I'm don't. excited to read uh, the a, a wild those nautical adventure in the Clam America uh, yeah. setting. Uh, in Clam America. Clam America. Yeah, yeah. It works better now. Um, <laughs> so... Or I guess it could be from the uh, perspective of the Civil Warriors, and you could call it Clan. Oh, oh. <laughs> I hope I hope Wildbo doesn't write that for his own health. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that one sounds spicy. Um, mm. So we have a mention, yay! yay. Um, so there was a really cool piece of fan art that was done for chapter six point six point four, done by the artist. Uh, oh God, Ichtha. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pr- or Ichtha. I don't, I don't know. Um, usernames are really hard to pronounce. Uh, it's um, actually, anyway, it was it's really actually cool. a lowercase l, Lickthida. Lickthida. <laughs> All right. Well, I, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, um, the username aside, they did a wonderful piece of art. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a really cool piece of fan art. Um, we will link it in the, uh, chapter notes. Um, so check it out and comment on it and say, wow, mm. that's a great piece of th- fan art. Thank you. Um. Yeah, <laughs> it's our it's so, time for our second last discussion question. Yay! So last week we asked if hypothetically you were going to change your name and flee to a second chance on life, who would you like to be? Name, location, profession, asking for a friend, uh, and uh, you know the 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 core of this question was really like if you had to uproot your life and get your second chance, like where would you go? Who would you be? Um, yeah. And uh, 40i2 uh, really r- pulled the rug out from under me with this one, uh, with the incredible uh, and uh, p- uh, pointed answer of a retired multi-billionaire. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it, it's pretty flawless. It's mm. a good answer. Um, Ripolite has uh, said that, uh, first of all, that this story has given them more gray hairs as, as an expecting, uh, like, I guess, parent, uh, due to learning a hell of a lot more about child death surrounding exhausted parents. Uh, yeah, fucking reasonable. Um, best of luck. Uh, it takes a village. We believe in you. Yeah. Yes, we don't really. Don't be afraid really to ask for help. You. Yeah, don't be afraid to ask for help. And if people aren't giving you help, tell them to fuck off and find better people. Mm. Um, for the discussion question, they don't think they'd be able to start a new identity as they would not want to leave their wife, but she'd make it harder to start a new life due to her very specific medical conditions being easily identifiable. Identifiable. That being said, if they could uh, have a new identity, they think being able to own a small plot of land, a garden, and being reclusive would be enough. Which yeah, I like it. I I, I uh, really appreciate that line because you know if you have a, a small plot of land, you can have highly specific medical equipment. Um, yeah. Uh, Belig Tal uh, also uh, really threw me through a loop with uh, his answer. Uh, Don <laughs> I love says, his answer. Um, I like my name and profession. Sad face. Uh, <laughs> Would probably move to Vancouver. I like PC a lot. Uh, which <laughs> indicates to me that Dante actually is already in his second life. Um, and yeah. uh, is very happy with how it's been settled. And so it's just telling us yeah. details about things that are already happening. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have an answer from... Oh, right, I have to say this one out loud again. What, today is a day for difficult uh, usernames. Uh, Tronimus Momonga. Uh, says, I'd be the quirky personal assistant to a reclusive philanthropist who wouldn't be a real person, but another false identity. This one only operating via internet slash letter writing slash the occasional disastrous video call. See the lawyer with a cat filter. Enough to establish your presence. I like that yeah. one. I, this one's really well put together, um, but I, I have a favorite. Um, Cyrano de Bergerac says, <laughs> If I could, I would get myself a wild and extensive collection of forged documents and identities and travel the world using my credentials to authorize things for people in need who are experiencing institutional barriers. Diagnosis? Gotcha. Bank loan? Here you go. Custody of your child away from your corrupt husband? That sucks. Here's all your papers. Then I'd probably get caught and thrown in the sea, but it'd be a wild ride. Yeah, that's a fun answer. I like it. How does it feel to be Um, Sam Reich? (laughs) 
<laughs> I love that. I love that. Claw taught me nothing, right? <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, for my answer, I, I think I would like to be kind of like hermit tier, like halfway to Bolden, but with internet. Um, go back to like, just like trans, tra- uh, like transcription work, um, which is something I've done before. That's kind of meh, but whatever, I can do it. And just like keep my presence on the down low. Just play a shitload of video games, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, for myself, uh, I used to study uh, biology and earth sciences because I was expecting that in order to transition, I would have to give a PhD defense of like, well, I know absolutely everything about uh, gender, biology, and uh, science itself. So I know that this is totally fine. Um, so, you know, in- indicative of who, what sort of opposition I expected. Um, but I haven't really done uh, earthy or gardening stuff in years because I haven't had like gardens about um, so I'd probably look for a job where I can sit in a lab testing samples all day, uh, different enough to be a smoke bomb for whatever I'm fleeing, comfortable enough to become a new home. Yeah, I like that. Um, so our final discussion question is... What's your favorite arc? Favorite chapter? Favorite scene? Oh, there are some fucking good scenes, so mm. yeah. Good luck figuring out which one was your favorite from Claw. Um, I, I definitely thought podcast. that it could have been like favorite character, but I feel like this is the best way for someone to reveal their favorite character if they want to talk about Ooh. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, please feel free to talk about your favorite character. Um, and if anyone says, ban, I'm banning them. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> a power that you don't have. Fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so yeah, check out Wildbo's Patreon at patreon.com slash Wildbo. This is his, yeah, this is his white supremacist run prison. We're just starving to death in solitary. It's crazy how they have mics down here. Um, <laughs> please give us a rating and a review on the podcatcher of your choice. And if you want to chat to us about the show or follow along with live reads, check out our channel on the Doof Media Discord. Find the invite link at doofmedia.com slash discord. Bye for now. Bye.